Hi guys, welcome back to your Not So Ordinary Scrapbook channel. Um, I am, first I want to apologize, I guess, um, for not filming a video yesterday. Um, I had a really busy day and then after, <laughs> it got to be later at night, um, after I got everything done that I needed to get done, um, I took some time to print out a whole bunch of pictures for my December dailies. So, um, I'm probably not going to use all of them just because of the amount of pages that I need to complete, but it's okay. I just printed out the ones that I know that I want to use and in my December daily. And then, um, and then whatever's left over, I will, um, I will do, um, later on, or I'll make like 12 by 12 layouts for those. Um, so for, I don't think I'm going to do anything for this, um, beautiful card that Randy Reed painted. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. I don't think I'm going to even decorate the back. I'm just going to leave it. And then we're going to start with this one today. Um, that says Merry Christmas. And then I'm going to work through this one. And then this card from my husband's work. I might embellish a little bit. And then the back. Um, I'm going to cover and embellish. So that's pretty much what I am going to do today. I need to kind of look at the colors um, to decide what I'm going to do. Um, this is a cute one of Kaysen. I know I need to do this one. This actually was prior to this first week in, it was like, was it December 1st? Pretty sure it was de December 1st, but we're going to make it December six. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay if your dates are not, you know, are a little bit mixed up. So this day I got together with my friend Michelle at her house. We went Christmas shopping together. Um, it was, I want to say that it was like small, um, business Saturday. Um, so it was definitely a Saturday. And, um, and we went, um, shopping downtown. We went to a bakery, bought these amazing cinnamon rolls. Um, we went back to our house, had lunch, just visited and just had so much fun together. It's like time stands still whenever I get together with her. She is just an amazing human being. She has battled all year and come up on top, come out on top, um, after her husband's suicide. And I just, she is like the strongest woman that I have ever known. I've always known that she was a strong woman, but, um, She just has persevered like no one that I have ever known. Um, <clears throat> and that's one of the things that I love about her so much. Um, so she is one of the only people in my life. I only have a few that I can be completely real with. Like... 100% raw, real, like, we can probably more so than any other person, even, um, we can talk about things that I don't talk about with anybody else, or that she doesn't talk about with anybody else, it's just, that's how close our relationship is, um, and I'm so thankful for her because I don't, I honestly don't know what I would do without her. 
Um, I have a couple other friends that are like close friends that I can definitely be honest with and I can talk to them um, about many things. Um, but um, like she is like a sister from another mother. She just is we are the same age. We are going through the same life um, stage together um, in different ways. We both are, you know, we battle, you know, she's healthy, but, but we battle things, similar things, you know, female issues we can talk about and, um, just struggles in general. It's just, I always feel like so much better when we get together. It's just, I, it's just, and she does too. Like she always just, I don't know. There's just something about our relationship that it's a relationship that formed, um, we just connected and I didn't know her prior to moving here. Um, we didn't work together. Um, I actually helped her sell her house and that's how I met her. Um, long story about 20, well, I had only been married to Scott for one year. Let's just say that when I met her and, um, yeah. And we've been really close friends ever since. Our kids grew up together. Our kids are around the same age. Um, she got me into scrapbooking. She is the one who, without her, I would not be scrapbooking today. Let's just say that. So, yeah, it's been a close relationship. Throughout the past 23 years, I think. So it's, it's crazy how our relationship developed due to like me helping her sell her house. And that was like, <laughs> it's crazy, crazy to think. She always likes to tell people that story when like her old friends, she's like, you're never going to believe how me and Amy met so many years ago. It's just, it's crazy. So I got this t-shirt for my birthday. It says my Christmas movies watching shirt. Scott bought it for me. And I think I'm going to scrapbook this one. So, I think this is enough. So, if I do Kaysen in the Santa hat, me and Michelle, or Michelle and I, and um, the Christmas shirt. I think that's enough for the layouts that I'm going to complete for today. So, um... So, yeah, I've been trying to be way more intentional lately. Um, with everything that I do, um, that's, I don't make, re I'm not a person who makes resolutions because I think that they never last very long. Um, they just, I, especially like weight loss resolutions are just, I think, they are the most ridiculous thing that anybody can ever make because like by February, most people are like, okay, I'm done with this, you know? Um, and some people, you know, are successful. I'm not trying to knock anybody who's successful out there or whatever. Um, but I think that like throughout the year, we should just try to be intentional in bettering ourselves every day. Um, and I've been working really hard, um, this month to try to, like, try to, like, discover happiness. I think that that's probably one area that I struggle with the most is trying to, um, be happy. And, like, I think that I have always depended on other people to other people's happiness to make me happy. So I have always tried to make every situation happy or like to please people or to make them 
happy. I, there's no other word like that I can use. I, I mean, I'll crack a joke, like trying to lighten a situation. Um, sometimes I tell people what they want to hear just because, um, I want to keep a situation from escalating. Um, and I think that that's part of being, um, codependent is you want other people to be happy all the time because you're just a people pleaser. And that's kind of the type of person that I've always been. And, um, I always thought like growing up that if I didn't rock the boat, if I didn't cause a problem, then everything would be good. You know, everything, everybody would be happy and, and there would, um, never be, you know, any issues or anything like that. But that's crazy to think that, to be honest, there's, there's no way that you can go through life like that. It, I don't know why it's taken me this long to, to realize that, um, you, it's impossible to make everybody happy. And the only way to find true happiness is to discover it yourself. You can't obtain happiness through other people. And I think that that's where I have been, um, for years, like, like, and I think that that's contributed to the sadness that I've had, or if you want to call it depression, I'm, I don't like the word depression because I don't consider myself a person who suffers from depression. I have friends who as well-meaning as they might be, have told me straight up, you suffer from depression. Um, but I know how to work through it, I guess, most of the time. Um, not saying that I don't get down ever or, you know, and you guys who have been here for a long time know that. I mean, I struggle in, you know, getting down and like, you know, talking about things that make me sad or whatever, or, you know, that like, I feel like giving up or whatever. And, you know, that's, I think it's a reality for most people. I think that there are times in our life where we just feel like nothing is going right. And maybe life would be better off without, you know, us. Um, is it something that I would ever consider doing? No. It is not something that I would ever consider doing. First, for a couple of different reasons, honestly. Um, one reason is because um, I know firsthand what it does to the family. Um, I know what Steve's suicide did to Michelle and her kids. Or their kids. It it destroyed them. Um, yes, she has fought back valiantly, like, valiantly and has has come so far. Um, and I'm so proud of her. I mean, but like she told me, she didn't have a choice. You know, she had. It was either. You know, she wanted to die too when he died. And and it was either fight or, or you know, just give up. And, um, and she fought and she has come out on top in so many ways. Not saying that she's never sad. She is sad. She's still heartbroken. She's still struggling with in certain areas, but she is winning. And I feel that way sometimes about my heart condition that, you know, like 
I feel sometimes I don't give myself enough credit. You know, I want to give everybody else credit for helping me to regain my health. But ultimately, it was me who who did the work. I mean, had I not done the work, I, I am pretty sure I wouldn't be here today. Um, my heart was in really bad, it was in really bad shape. Um, and when people look at me, they don't realize how bad a shape my heart actually was in. Um, you know, a lot of people, especially when I'm at rehab, they'll come up to me and especially new people who haven't seen me before, um, they'll ask, they'll, they'll watch me and then they'll come up to me and they'll ask me, um, like, do you just come here to work out? I've been asked that before. Um, do you, do you have a heart condition? Um, people have asked me if I work there. Um, it's just a lot of people, new people don't, um, because I do so well now, they don't understand, um, why I'm there. Um, but I'm glad I'm there because I always tell them why I'm there. And, and I always am open about my heart condition because I do not ever want people to feel like they are alone, that they're fighting alone. I want them to know that I have worked hard and I have been going there for a while. And so, you know, not that they should expect the same success that I have had so far, but, um, but that they, um, but they can improve, you know, their condition, you know, there's a possibility. I mean, I never give them any, like, guarantee because that's not my place. Um, but you're going to improve your health with movement. I mean, whether it's long lasting, whether it's successful or not, um, it can't hurt is what I'm saying. And, um, and I hope that I am an inspiration to other people, um, by being there. And not someone that people look like and look at and say like, oh, I'll, you know, I can never, you know, I might as well give up because I'll never get to that point. Or, you know, especially the older ones who, you know, and I try to explain to them when they ask, they're like, how you know, you work so hard, how, how can you, how can you do that? And I'll be like, well, first of all, I'm quite young for, to have the condition that I have, which makes a big difference. And, um, I kind of want to put like a small town here, not to get off topic, but like, you know how Christmas Christmas movies pretty much all have the same theme. They're all like small town, rural, <laughs> um, you know, like an old, an old fashioned church, that kind of thing. So, and I just like that polar bear. I think he's cute. So I'll just, just put some of these here, I think. And we did watch a ton of Hallmark movies this year. That's one thing that we really did. 
but um, I just want to inspire people and I want to give them hope so they don't give up because I felt like giving up. I felt like when I got my diagnosis, like I can honestly tell you that the, the first thought that ran through my head was, um, I'm going to die. That was it. That was like, like that first night at home, I have never felt so alone in my life. I felt like no one understood that, that there was nothing anyone could say to help me. No one could say anything that would help me. Um, I just was, I was devastated. There's no other word to say it. I, I was mad at my cardiologist. I, oh, I was furious at her. Um, and she ended up being my favorite cardiologist, um, so far, which is kind of funny. But I was mad at her because she... First of all, when she called me in to discuss the results of my um, echo and of, um, oh, I had this other test. Um, I forgot what it was called. X-ray of my heart. It was, it was like a literal X-ray of my heart. Um, she, um. when they scheduled the appointment she never said make sure that you bring someone with you she never said anything i thought she i had had cardiologist appointments before and um prior to that and i'd had testing before like i'd had echoes before but Every time I went in, it was just normal. Like, like they would say, you know, they, they tell me that my heart was enlarged and, but like for the most part, my, everything was normal. It was, it wasn't anything to like be concerned about. No one ever said anything about like, like me being severely ill, um, and definitely they never mentioned that I had heart failure. Never. And um, and so I just didn't expect much. I guess I went I went into that appointment thinking that everything she was just gonna tell me the same thing that every other cardiologist said. Um and I la like she was talking about like what stage I was in and it was like, it was bad. I mean, my ejection fraction was bad. It was really, really bad. And, um, and she was talking about like treatment plans and like, and like if that didn't work, they would like, give me a machine that would help me stay alive and all this stuff. And it literally scared the crap out of me. Like I was so, I was shaking all the way home. I was like driving home by myself, like 45 minute drive. Like I couldn't even cry. I was so scared. I was just like, I had never, I don't even remember the drive home. It was just like, I was terrified and um, I got home, Scott was at work, um, I didn't want to talk about it in front of Hunter and Ethan because, you know, I didn't want them to get scared and so I just kind of kept it all inside and I, I was terrified. I mean, I was so, like that night... I told Scott and all he really said was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I, you know, and he's like, what are they going to do? You know? And I'm like, I don't know. 
you know, I don't know what they're going to do. I, they, she wasn't, she was very vague about everything. And, um, And I just, I just remember just like bawling all night long. Just, I just was like, my life is over. Um, no one can help me. And then I made the mistake of like thinking that it would be a good idea to join like a Facebook group, like for people who had my condition. Bad idea. Because... Everyone was talking about things that, like, they're the worst case scenario. Like, you're probably not going to live for five years. Um, it, it just was, it was very, very depressing and very, very sad. And um, I just I can't even tell you just, like, how awful I felt and how alone I felt. And then... Um, so I was like losing it, like majorly losing it. And at that point I was on no, like I was on no anxiety medication at all. I, um, so I was like, like basically hyperventilating. I was just so distraught and, um, Scott got really worried about me. And he's like, you need to make an appointment with your regular doctor. And, um, well, I didn't, I don't like my regular doctor. Um, he's the one who, like, I had been, like, going to see him and, like, complaining about different things. And all he would do was say, well, if you'd lose weight, you know, you'd, you'd feel better. You wouldn't be tired all the time. All these things that contributed to my condition and you know and he would just like like poo poo it all you know he'd be like because I can remember asking him should I you know should I see my cardiologist and he said he said well your last your last scan was fine I think that you're fine you just need to lose weight or whatever. So like, I really did not want to see him. So I made an appointment with, um, my nurse. I think Scott actually made that appointment because I was just so like, I was, I literally thought I was going to die. And, um, Scott made me, made me an appointment with his nurse practitioner. And he's like, you have got to see her because she is like freaking out. I was literally freaking out. And, um, and so the nurse practitioner came in and I just like unloaded on her and she's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It does not say that you have congestive heart failure. It says that you have cardiomyopathy. It's different. It's not that and all this stuff. And she's just going into details about this. And I'm like, that's not what my cardiologist said. She, you know, I told her exactly what my cardiologist said. And she was just like, she was like, you're not going to die. You're fine. You know, if you need some anxiety medicine, we'll give you some anxiety medicine. And so I just felt like she did not give a crap. Like, it was just like. I, I literally felt like she did not give a crap. And I'm like, why is it these, these doctors, like, act like, you know, why are you, why are you reacting this way when, you know, when it, if it was their life, they would be, like, freaking out too, you know. Um, you know, I had young teenagers. I, you know, I was just like freaking out. And, um, and so she gave me some anxiety medicine, which helped. And then she suggested that, uh, she referred me to the heart failure clinic. And I did not know, she didn't explain what it was. And 
but I was like reluctant to join, like to go at first. Cause I was like, you know, if they're going to tell me the same thing that my doc, my cardiologist said, I don't, there's no point in going there and all this stuff. And I was just like, really, I was in a very, very dark place. And, um, and so Scott convinced me to call the heart failure clinic. I made an appointment. I knew I didn't want to go in Springfield. I wanted to do it locally and we got me all set up and it was everything, everything that I needed. They provided me with all the information. They let me, like, they spent so much time with me. Like, they, they handled my medication. They handled my insurance. They handled, like, everything step by step. They walked me through every little thing. And, oh, my gosh, my love for those women is so great because it's like I do not think that I would be where I am today if it wasn't for them and they got rid of the program I don't know if it was because of budgets I budget cuts I don't know if not enough people were utilizing it or if it wasn't helping enough people but oh my gosh without them by my side and then them referring me to rehab and getting me on an exercise plan and you know watching like helping me like figure out what I should eat what I shouldn't eat um them fighting for the prescription that I have that's super expensive I mean so many places would have denied it. I mean, my insurance would have denied it. They had, in fact, they denied it a couple of times. And then, and then like they wrote a letter to them saying she needs this. This is, it is essential that she has this. It will, it will, it will help her live a longer life. And, um, I would not have been able to do that on my own. None of it. And, um, I'm so grateful for that team. I just, it just, like, when she called me to tell me that they weren't going to do it anymore, I cried. Like, I literally cried. I could not, I couldn't handle it. It, it was like, I, I was on the phone with her when she told me, and I was like, how can they end this program? What are other people going to do? And all I could think about was like the older people. Like I was only 50 years old and I was like, what are older people going to do? Because I didn't know what to do and I'm basically pretty young. So what are older people going to do? How are they going to know what to do? I was just like, oh. I still wonder how people are getting by because they, sometimes budget cuts may look good on paper, but they are not good for the people that, that they're there to help. But, but anyway, I sh I mean, I, I pretty much did it all, you know, like aside from those people that I am so grateful for helping me, um, I listened and I, and I took in everything like a sponge and changed my life and, you know, and I'm still doing it five years in, but I honestly, had I not been diagnosed and gotten the medication that I need and exercise started exercising regularly 
I, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be here right now. Would have never met my granddaughter. Um, would have never seen Matt. And yes, you get married. You know, all the future great things that are going to happen. I definitely wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have gone back to school to get my master's degree. Um, crazy. It's crazy to think about. Okay, back to scrapbooking. Let's just not linger this on and on and on. Um, so I think here, I'm not going to fill this in right now because there were a few um, Hallmark Christmas movies that were like really awesome. Um, but I'm going to put um, Scott and I would watch one Hallmark Christmas movie <laughs> um, after he got home from work. from work at 11 p.m. each night. And we did every night after he would come home from work. Um, I would find a Christmas movie or we'd both pick one out. Like we'd go through the list because YouTube has like all the Hallmark movies Amazon Prime has a ton of Hallmark movies. Then Netflix has, you know, they had a bunch of Christmas movies this year, too. It was, there were a lot this year, but it was fun. It was, it was something that we've never really done because in past years, he likes rom-coms. He's just one of those guys that likes rom-coms. Um, but, like, Ethan... When the kids were younger or living at home, like when Hunter lived at home and Ethan didn't work every night, I would let him pick out like um, a movie we could watch. And most of the time when he would pick one out, it would always be like, you know, the like um, Elf or or um, the Santa Claus or, you know. Um, Home Alone, those, the big movies um, that you watch every year, A Christmas Story, those kind of ones. Um, not that there's anything wrong with those, and we did watch those this year um, as a family when people would come over and stuff, but um, but, like, it was just something that Scott and I started doing, and it was so fun, because, like, and it all started, like, without even a plan. It just, like, one night after work, um, he would, he, you know, he never felt like going to bed right away after he got home from work. He always wanted to unwind a little bit. And, um, and so, um, we just started picking out movies and, um, Christmas movies. And we started watching them and it was just, it just became fun. A fun thing for us to do after, after he got home from work. And, um, I think we're going to try to use that one. And I need a background or like a map. Um, the color. I'm going to go through my scraps and see if I can find something I could use as a mat. Maybe this red. I like that. Is there something else? So, 
so um it was just a fun tradition that will probably you know continue on in the future um And we have continued it somewhat because I think that's the best one. Um, we have considered it, we have continued it somewhat because now instead of watching Christmas movies, like all through January, we have been watching um, Criminal Minds and there's like, I don't know, 18 seasons or something like that, a ridiculous amount of seasons. And, like, I can only stay out so long. I cannot stay out, like, super late. Um, or I just feel awful in the morning if I, if I stay up really late. So, um, unless we've got, like, mini Jordan here and I'm sleeping in the living room. And then I get up, like, several times in the night to check on him. Um, but... Um, we've been, we've been watching like one or two episodes when he gets home from work every night and it's fun. It's fun to watch. Like, um, not that the episodes are fun to watch cause they're really creepy and kind of scary actually. Well, they're, they're pretty scary because they're all about like catching serial killers which I'm glad that they all like you know die in the end or they you know they kill themselves or they get shot by police or or they get arrested and go to prison and go to death row or whatever but um you know it's it's something that he enjoys watching it's something that I enjoy watching um, it's entertaining because I like, you know, the characters that are in it. Um, the, um, FBI people that are in it. Um, especially Penelope. I think Penelope is my very favorite, um, She just cracked me up. But, um, so we've been watching that every night and it's kind of turned into like a nightly ritual, which is nice. I think that it's nice to just come together and relax, like at the end of the evening, you know, and usually most of the time he'll go to bed at the same time as I do now. Um, unless he's not tired, then he'll stay up later. But, you know, the whole trust issues thing is really difficult when, like, when he wants to stay up. And I'm trying to be trusting, and it's hard sometimes. Um, I put the most wonderful time of the year, but she hates that song. Um, Michelle told me that she hates that song more than any other Christmas song right now. Because it's not the most wonderful time of the year. Um, it's pretty awful, actually. It's been pretty awful for her. Because um, it was last Christmas. Or Christmas of 2021 that that happened. I put happy holidays like two friends. This is her. This is me. So I love that. And then I want to do like a journaling box where I can journal a little bit. So I'm thinking um Something that about like friendship or no. kind of like this. 
Oh, I did go to her house. Maybe I'll use this and this one. Oh, I like, well, we'll just do this. I don't really want to cover up that. What if I rip that up? So I talked to my mom last night and she is booking my flight to Las Vegas for the end of February, beginning of March, because she wanted to know if I, could, if I would be there for her birthday. Um, she's spending her birthday in Lake Havasu City because her birthday is in early March. So um, I said, sure, that would be fun. And so she's going to do that. I'm hoping to fly out of St. Louis because I really hate flying out of Chicago. I do not like O'Hare Airport at all. I just... Don't like it. Um... Plus, I think it's a little bit closer for us. Um, not much, but I think it's a little bit closer. Um, so I think I'm going to use some of these Buffalo Check hearts. Like that one. And then this gray one. And then... I'll do like a black one. Um, I think I'm going to use this coffee mug because we did have tea. And I'm trying to make this cohesive. Maybe like that. Maybe if I put this gray one like right there. I think I like that better. Now I think I need to put something up here. Um, I like these two because she is an avid camper. In fact, she bought her own camper this year. Um, so she can go camping with her dog, with Bailey. Kind of like the thermos reminds me of her, and I'm going to use the lantern too because that is kind of the camping vibe I get. I did, we did go camping with her once, her and Steve, years ago when Ethan was a baby. <laughs> and there was a tornado. It was in Downs. So we went we went camping with them. And there's a tornado that night. And I was like not having it. I'm like, I have a baby. And we have a tent. <laughs> <coughs> but she still loves me. So I was just being a little over dramatic apparently. Okay, so I am going to, I think this is enough for like embellishments, um, unless I can find friends or something like that in my 
10 faults, but there's probably some. This is getting all messed up again, of course, which is inevitable. Seems to happen every time. So let's look for together. I like that one. Um, so maybe I'll just put these like here. Instead of doing like extra journaling, I could put together. Journey is a good one for us. Embrace, secrets, and friendship. I love that. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Tim Holtz. <laughs> make sure these are straight this one doesn't seem straight you know what I need is my tweezer my handy dandy tweezer so today I I've been trying I've been doing this pantry challenge all month and I have, like, hardly gotten any groceries at all, all month so far. Um, except for, like, staple things. You know, like, a few items a week. Like, of course, you know, you need, you run out of laundry detergent, toilet paper. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, but, um. like that that's perfect for us all of these words are like perfect for us um but and you know we've had to buy like milk and eggs and you know things that you like items that you use all the time you know that just get used up there are only a few items that we use consistently throughout the week um, it's milk, eggs, coffee creamer, um, orange juice, because Ethan loves orange juice, um, coffee, um, of course, um, is there anything else? Like cooking spray, olive oil, butter, um, like those kinds of things. Um, and then produce every week. I always buy new produce every week because we usually, I only buy a few things and then we use it up. Or, you know, I've been trying to use like any produce that's in the freezer and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise I've been cooking out of the freezer and the pantry. Um, so last night, like the past two nights, I've eaten vegetarian. Um, and Ethan ate vegetarian when he got home so yesterday I cooked up some lentils and rice and I made lentil tacos um and using up like tortillas that we had and just you know a couple tortillas um cheese some sour cream avocado um, lettuce. I didn't have any tomatoes, so I just didn't even put that in there. Um, but I cooked up in with the lentils. I cooked up, like I cooked the lentils because they were dry. They're from the pantry and then, um, from our pantry. And, um, and I cooked up an onion and some red bell pepper, um, in the um, skillet 
and some olive oil and then I added the cooked lentils and the cooked rice is what I meant to the pan and then I fried that like all together put some taco seasoning in it and then just ate tacos that way well I only added like a cup of lentils and like a cup of rice so I had like rice and lentils left over um so today I made lentil soup and I used up some carrots that we had in the fridge and some spinach and um baby spinach and chicken broth which is in the pantry um and some spices a can of tomatoes um diced tomatoes that was in the pantry um <coughs> <coughs> And that was really good. So I had that for lunch. I'm going to have it for dinner too. And then I just heated up some corn tortillas. Um, and I just ate that with it. Like in place of bread. So um, that turned out really good. So Ethan can have that when he gets home from work. And then um, I'll probably eat the rest of that. Like for lunch every day until it's gone. I'm on, um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to make tomorrow, but I've been cooking, like, it has helped to, like, my goal for, like, until I leave for Arizona is to, like, strictly eat out of our freezer in our pantry, because, like, for some reason, we just, like, I buy all these canned goods and I buy all these things and I never end up making it. Um, so, um, I just made a commitment with myself that I was going to do that until like, we're going to eat up what we have until, until it's gone and then we'll buy more. And <clears throat> it's really saved us a lot of money. Because we're really, like, only spending, like, $30 a week on groceries, which is amazing. And especially with grocery prices being so expensive right now, it's just ridiculous. <coughs> and that's including the $5 eggs. So, um, yeah. But is this the wide tip? Or is this, I think that's the wide tip. I don't want the wide tip. Okay, um... Michelle and I had such a great time. Christmas shopping. Together. and enjoying each other's company I was so proud of her last night um I rarely get on Facebook anymore like um I just don't have time and it's a huge distraction but like late last night well I was waiting for Scott to get home because I had like completed all my chores for the day um I was done with work I had printed out all these photos which took forever um I don't recommend if you get the selfie I love the selfie um my recommendation is like five stars on that <coughs> <coughs> the pictures are really great quality and it's very convenient and I love it um but it does take a while to print out so in the future when my December daily is is finished I am only going to print out one picture at a time um when I scrapbook because it takes a really long time to print um so um That is the only thing. Um, and I did have to replace my ink 
once, one time. Um, and my paintbrush several times because it only, well, like, the, the um, printer will only take 10 photo sheets at a time, which is fine. That's not a problem. I have lots of them, so I'm not worried about that. But, um, um, I think I'm going to put, like, I put my dad's red dapper dad papa bear maybe we'll do papa bear here this embellishment and then tools because he these aren't exactly the tools he uses because he works in fabrication but he changes dyes and stuff. So I think, is there any other pieces that pop out? I think so. I think we'll put that one down here. Just like an added embellishment and anything else. Um, Maybe we'll start dad here in the toolbox. No, all the guys got one of these cards because um, they all work there, but I think they got this card with their um, Carhartt sweatshirt. And then I think I'm going to see if I can find some thing that might go with it as far as like um put Santa on there Maybe a couple of enamel dots. Where did I put my enamel dots? I'm not sure. I think I'm going to put a seven on here for day seven. do that like right there and maybe a star there to cover up that <laughs> spot okay so that's cute for that and then the back of this I'm gonna cover up and I am going to put case in and I think what I'm going to put um, as a title on this is Santa Baby because I saw that picture and that was like the title that I came up with in my mind. I was like, I got to put a Santa Baby on this picture. This is at their house, so someone put a Santa hat on his head. That's at Hunter and Jordan's house. Um, so I think I'm going to try to go with blue. A blue big background. This would be cute, but I don't think it'll fit. He's wearing a navy blue shirt. That's purple, though. Okay. 
This is a wood grain. That might be cute. And then, what about that blue? That is okay. Okay, there's also a bow one. Okay, so let's see if we can work with that a little bit. So I think I'm first going to mat it on this. So Scott and I, Saturday, we're going to go up to Bloomington and do a little shopping and go out to lunch and that kind of thing in the morning. And then Hunter called yesterday and he's like, he's like, Jordan and I were wondering if you wanted to go to breakfast on Sunday morning, like go out to breakfast because we haven't done that in a while. And I'm like, oh, that sounds fun. So I was talking to Scott um, this morning about it. And I said, well, I really don't want to go out to eat for lunch if we're going to go out to breakfast um, on Sunday. Um, because I've, like, been throwing, like, all my extra money paying, trying to pay off, like, the credit card debt that I accumulated <coughs> like this past year because like with a wedding and everything and then Christmas on top of it and just like the, it's a lot it's it's been a lot um the lawyers um you know everything has just been really expensive this year it seems like it, I have used my credit, oh, and then fixing the cars too. So like I have used my credit cards, two of them, a lot this year. And um, I have been trying not to use them at all. Um, since Christmas. Um, I've just been like just paying on them like big chunks of money at a time because I want to get out of debt as soon as possible. I mean, I don't have gigantic balances on them, but I don't like having any balance on them because as what has happened before, like catastrophe hits and then like, then what do we do? Um, and I kind of feel bad that, like, Scott has not been able to, like, get his engine replaced because, like, we used, you know, the credit cards for, like, other stuff. So, um, so that's part of the reason why I've been trying to save as much as possible and just throw, like, money that we would have spent on like non-essentials on paying on my credit cards so I can get that I like that okay So that is my goal um, because we have another baby due in September and that is, you know, we have a shower. I have a trip, two trips coming up. I have the trip to Arizona and, and that's usually the only time I mostly use credit cards are like on trips, like when I go to Arizona or like, um, in May for grandma's 98th birthday, all the cousins are getting together and we're having like family reunion and uncle Steve and aunt Ruth are coming and 
So all of that, um, as well. So like, that's a lot. Um, I just want to have like enough on me. Like if someone wants to go out to dinner or go shopping or whatever, you know, when you're on vacation and you just want to be able to have the freedom to do whatever you want. Um, I thought I had a sticker that said paint the baby, but I don't know if I am remembering right. I love disorganization. I was sure I had one that said Santa Baby. sheet fall on the floor. And it's under my table. But I don't think that's the one I want. Oops. Sorry about that. That's not say to baby either. Those are cute. Now my nose is dripping again. Nice. That would be cute. It's Santa's favorite. What does this say? If I can't find it, I can just spell it. It's not a big deal. Okay, sweet. use that Santa and then just put baby underneath. That would be cute too. Santa can explain. Joy, Merry Christmas, ha ha ha. I kind of swore and I had one that said Santa baby. Maybe not. I could be wrong. Under these. What does this say? No. Okay, well, we're just going to go with what I've got. So, and we'll just 
create Santa Baby. And I'm not sure how long this video is, so <laughs> it's probably going to be at least an hour, knowing me. The only place I didn't look was, oh, maybe there was a car that said Santa Baby. Maybe. Okay. I'm going to sit down again. <laughs> Sorry, I should have had this pre-planned. Everyone likes to look through other people's stash anyway. <laughs> At least I do. I can't find out with this first run through. I don't. I'm not going to go through it again. Because it's not imperative that I use it. It's so bright out. It snowed a lot yesterday. And overnight again, I think we got like two or three inches of snow. So it is definitely cold. I don't know. I'm not finding anything, so I don't think that I'm going to do that. It's not going to happen. Look cute, though. Look cute, little Santa. I don't like to plan everything in advance. I know it's faster and like the like the video goes faster and everything and you know. But if you're anything like me, I generally watch these <coughs> um process videos when I'm scrapbooking. So it gives me something to do um while I scrapbook. Um I'm gonna wait on that. Could use this one that what Santa doesn't know won't hurt him. <coughs> or toy to the world. I'm an angel at Christmas time, but the rest of the year, I'm the real me. He's such a sweetheart, though. He's not naughty at all. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
none of my grandchildren are naughty. They're just perfect little angels in grandma's eyes. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to use this Santa here. And I'm going to put, um, how am I going to do this? Do I want it down here, Santa baby? I think so. Santa baby. So I got to work later tonight in about an hour. So I need to get going. Um, I don't know if I'll eat again or not. I thought about like having some more soup, but I just had, I mean, I ate a late lunch, so... I don't know. I don't know if I'll eat again or not. I'm not really hungry. It's very filling, so. So I have a lot of stuff on my agenda that I gotta do today. Aside from, I got to work for three hours. And then I have to, um, well, it'll all come out to about four hours into the evening. And then, because I do like three different things. And then, to get that done, I want to read a chapter of my book. I need to fix a candle that is not burning correctly. Um, I need to get a stain out of my sweatshirt because somehow when I was making the lentil tacos last night, I got some seasoning on it. Um, so I got to treat that. And what else? Do I oh, and I have to, the flowers that Scott got me over the weekend, they're still in good shape, but the water is starting to turn green. So I need to change that water. But I think that's it. Like, that's all that's left to like, that has to be done today. That red is not the same red. I can't use that. Um, I need a darker red. I need this like dark red. So I need to find an embellishment that has a dark red on it. These ones do. Like this cute little hat. That's not a Santa hat. Um, oh, those stockings. That would be cute. I'll just do a border of stockings up here. That's cute. I like that. Oh. Yeah. I think that's good. There's not really anything else that I want there. Um, and I think I might put like a couple embellishments. These match too, these Holly Jolly. This Santa matches, so I think I'll use him. Just add him to the cluster. Right there. And this blue one. Oh, 
Jolly Jolly down here. Want that like one up lower so I can fit more journaling on. Jolly Jolly. And something up here. Um, maybe just Merry Christmas. I like that. That's cute. Good enough for that one. Okay. So I'm going to write um, <gasps> it would be funny if every year we took a picture of him in this hat and like how he grew like um Um, how can I write this? He has a while to go before his hat fits. Um, his hat is just a little big. How about Kaysen's hat is just a little big. Kaysen's hat is just a little big. Just a little big. That would be a cute gift for a baby. Like a Santa hat. And then like every year take their picture. Like as they grow into the hat. And then like when they're an adult and they become a dad. Give them that. I think that would be so cute. Okay that's it. And it looks like my battery's dying. So hopefully it's still filming. But um, that's all that I have for today. So I thank you all for watching and I will see you tomorrow in the next video. Bye.